We're ready. Here we go. You have just finished up soils and mass movements. That's done. We are now on to running water. Running water, groundwater, and then glaciers, deserts, and winds. We're talking about features of the earth. Okay, bigger picture, features of the earth. We're going to start with water. Okay, running water specifically. Okay, there's a lot of H2O across the surface of the earth. 97.2% of it is in the ocean, of the, of the water. Not that much of the earth is covered in water, but that much of the water is in the ocean. 2% ice sheets and glaciers, that leaves 0.65% lakes, streams, groundwater, and the atmosphere, because there's water in the air right now too. That's not a huge chunk. A lot of the water on Earth is too salty to use. It's frozen or it's locked up somewhere else. There is not a lot of fresh, clean groundwater to use, and it's a resource we need to take care of. So, let's move in between all these things. Let's look back at the water cycle. I know it's your favorite. We're going to take two quick glances at it. We're going to use NASA, and we're going to use NOAA, and we're going to compare and contrast. All right? Here's a NASA picture for you. The water cycle, what you have, you can have precipitation, you can have runoff, you have groundwater, and then you have evaporation, transpiration, and condensation. Transpiration might be a new newer one. Transpiration is uh, plants absorb the water, but then they release it into the atmosphere. So transpiration from plants, water goes from plants to the air. Precipitation, whether it's frozen or solid, it's still water. It's still H2O, the substance, not water, the liquid. You can have all sorts of runoff here. Um, infiltration is what you can get with the groundwater. It is infiltration is movement of surface water into cracks and pores, whether it's cracks in rocks or pores in the soil. That's infiltration. Transpiration is moving from plants to the atmosphere. Condensation makes a cloud. Evaporation is water coming off of surface water coming up and out. All right. Compare that NASA picture to this NOAA picture, National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration. So what do you have? You still got transpiration from plants to atmosphere. You've got condensation. Um, you have precipitation, runoff. All right, they talk about infiltration, but they add plant uptake, different kinds of runoff. All right, um, groundwater, evaporation, precipitation, all of this. Same thing, different picture. All right, there we go. So, good and awesome. All right, um, when the water cycle is balanced, the amount of precipitation you get, you know, average annual precipitation and the amount of evaporation are equal. That means all the lakes, all the rivers, the creeks stay at the same level. There's a wet season, there's a dry season. We know there are spring floods and our late summers are dry, but Southeast Missouri is not a huge monsoon like when we say wet season and dry season there are plenty of places on this earth that have torrential flooding and then absolute drying at different times of the year and so our creeks may be high in the spring and lower in the winter and that's fine but not near what other regions are so but balance in the water cycle if you evaporate just as much as you rain back down or snow back down then all those levels stay the same. All right. We're going to talk about some streams. 
stream is a nice generic term because it doesn't specifically mean a creek or a river. It just means flowing groundwater or flowing water. Okay. This is a stream profile. All right. One of the most important things when we're doing stream is um, the velocity. The velocity the stream has is the most, is the biggest factor in determining how much sediment it picks up, how much it erodes, how much it carries rock downstream, how much, or it drops it off if it slows down. The velocity determines most of that, all right? Uh, to, it, it determines the ability to erode and transport, is the short way to say that, those materials. Okay. Steam streams don't have uniform gradient. Gradient slope. Um, mountains are hilly. Lowlands are flat. So a stream, the gradient changes. Here the gradient is high. Here the gradient is low. And so the gradient changes over the course of a stream. This is showing lots of tributaries, probably too many to be realistic, unless you're talking about little creeks or drainage ditches. So the head is the beginning. The mouth is the ending. Not the ending, but it's where it discharges, where it reaches its base level. So the base level is the lowest point to which a stream can erode its channel. Um, maybe it's ultimate, maybe it's temporary. What it, we'll get to that in a second. It's the ocean. Eventually, everything flows to the ocean. Maybe. Okay. Um, stream channel is the size, the width, the depth of the path of the stream. The discharge is the amount of stuff, water coming out, tributaries feed in. You guys know those vocabulary words, okay? So this is a Missouri State, and they've got a stream profile. This is the Naval Academy, so this is elevation, and then distance. So this is only a kilometer, or less than a kilometer even long, but they're looking at meters. This thing dropped 90 meters. Dropped the length of a... It dropped the height of a football field over the course of... Uh, that's 0.7 kilometers over. That'd be half a mile right there. No. Yeah. No, I said that wrong. One kilometer out here is 0.6 miles. So, yeah, maybe half a mile to here. It dropped the height of a football field. That's moving pretty good. Can things go back uphill? Yeah, maybe. It's going to lose a lot of velocity. It's going to eventually go in a different direction. But it's possible if the channel is deep and narrow. All right. Let's see what else we've got. This is what I mean by temporary or ultimate. Sometimes a stream will flow into a lake. The lake that that is a temporary base because then somewhere else on the lake there's a the stream picks up and continues the stream doesn't run across the middle you might talk about channels in a lake and that's fine there are different there are currents in lakes um, but this stream slows down then you get pick it up new thing on the other side so this is the ultimate base level. This is a temporary base level. Um, but streams can flow into lakes. And sometimes if you've got a crazy mountain region, you might have enough stuff on that you could form an isolated lake in a valley or bottom of a valley. All right. Did we get everything? We get stream flow, gradient, channel. Yup, we're getting there. All right. Let's see. Ah, uh, when a stream gets flat, when, it, when the gradient flattens out, sorry, it meanders. 
meanders, takes his time, and does this and that. This is a meandering stream. And if you wait years and years, the red, the red is where the erosion is happening because that's where there's, it's turning the sharpest. So the outside of any turn is where you're going to erode. It's also where the stream is moving the fastest. In a straight shot, the fastest water is right in the middle, just below the surface. Because everything that's touching the rock, whether it's side or bottom, slows down a little bit. So the fastest water is right in the middle, just below the surface. As you bend, fastest water moves to the outside, slightly to the outside, still just below the surface. So the most erosion happens here. As you begin to wear this out year over year over year over year, you can get a neck and a cut bank back here. You can get a little point. And then all the inside of this is changing too. And then once this breaks and cuts through, this is now called an oxbow lake. It's left over. Every time this floods and gets up high water, it will jump over this little rise because that's almost flat. And it will fill this back up. And then it can come back out. All right, but this is not much higher than this stream right here. And it will, any little flooding will go back and refill this oxbow lake. Look at that. The gates of the Arctic in Alaska. That is a meandering stream. Good shot. All right. So let's put some things in context. How much water are in the rivers? All right. Um, the Amazon winds, then the Congo, then the Yangtze, and on and on and on and on and on. And wow, that's a lot of rivers. Here we go. Let's do it like this. We're going to look at click. We're going to look at average discharge in cubic meters per second. So cubic meter is a volume. So it's the volume of water per second. So a meter is just over three foot by three foot by three foot. So think of washing machine or think of a pallet okay pallets more than three foot but the thing stacked on the pallet it's going to be about three foot by three foot maybe it's that three foot tall washing machine a, a dryer a dishwasher those are about one cubic meter so if you had an aquarium that size full of water and nothing else how many of those per second averaged over the dry season and the wet season the whole thing 209,000 cubic meters per second is the Amazon. The next person is one-fifth of that. What, five times 40,000 gets me to 200,000? It would take five Congo rivers to have as much water as the Amazon River output. The Amazon is crazy important. Okay. It drains into the Atlantic. It, it's just huge. Congo River drains into the Atlantic. The Ganges. All right. The Yangtze. All right. And wait, where are we at? The Mississippi River. 14th. 16,700. So just barely less than the St. Lawrence. All right, which is the St. Lawrence River, the Great Lakes. That's the St. Lawrence River way, right? St. Lawrence River just is just about as much as the Mississippi. All right, and then this, the Maranon, goes into the Amazon. All right, so we can look at all of those by the amount of water they put out. This is the amount of area like how big an area flows into that river. Mississippi would be up there too, but what about this? Let's resort by length. The Nile is the longest river in the world. It's 95th though in amount of water. It is long and it's narrow. There's not that much water in the Nile but it is the longest river by a lot. 4,000 miles, it would be longer than New York to L.A. 
that's the, the Nile River is, I mean, the U.S. continent is 3,000 miles across, right? Hey, guess what? The Amazon, yeah, it's the next longest river. The Yangtze, just barely shorter. So the Yellow River, very, very long river. Congo, and you're going to find out something interesting right here. You may already know it. The Missouri River is just 21 miles longer than the Mississippi. A whole lot less water because you just take this much water and you pour it into this Mississippi amount. But the Missouri River is longer than the Mississippi River. All right. So then the St. Lawrence and some different, I mean, the Ganges is back. Dude. So it's interesting to see that that's the third most amount of water. It's a good ways down there on the longest. So let's see. Let's talk about some local features, local things, and then we'll wrap it up today. All right. Um, flood of 93 is next time and several other things. So. Cape LaCroix Creek, 1699 French missionaries prayed on the river and declared this is LaCroix Creek. 1699. There's some old stuff in this part of the continent, but that's some of the oldest right there. All right. Where is Cape LaCroix Creek? Here we go. Let's try. Let's try this. That is where LaCroix Creek goes into the Mississippi. There is the quarry. We are downtown Cape. There is Shawnee Park. All right. There's going to be what? Southern Expressway. This is Kings Highway in red. We're going to meander up LaCroix Creek here. There's Cape. All right. There's Arena Park. LaCroix Creek cuts across here. Again, red. This big red is Kings Highway. LaCroix Creek. This is going to be the, the nature trails over here. All right, LaCroix Creek. I just picked this one. It goes back under King's Highway. There's the roundabout. All right, right in here. LaCroix Creek. This goes up. It's on the left side here. This, uh, this turns into W as you go around right here. So there's the Humane Society. LaCroix Creek is now on the other side there's the jc golf course uh the w goes this way this should be 621 i'm pretty sure it's just why the road's not really listed anymore and so we're zoomed way in here um uh, that's 618 if you know the area east of jackson like this would be LaSalle, and this is w um, this is LaSalle, turns into Main Street. And then LaCroix Creek gets to here, and that's it. This is a topographical map. You can see elevation changes. Cape LaCroix Creek essentially begins right in here. Because from here, if there was water, it would actually flow the other way. And you would get to, I'm going to zoom out just a hint. You could come up here. This is Y. This is 621. That's V and Y. We're out to proctoring. Uh, so then this is where you start getting into Trail of Tears and all sorts of stuff. But LaCroix Creek starts. Now you can see these hills. Starts right in here. Maybe over here is where the water, and then you name it here. And it flows here, comes across, down, this way. Oh, lost it. Ah, because it comes back. I'm looking at the shading here. Zoomed out too much. Comes across down here into the Mississippi. So that's LaCroix Creek. I just picked that one just because it was interesting, and that's a topographical map. Those are good skills to learn. All right, second one I want to talk about today, other than the age of the LaCroix Creek, 
is the diversion channel. Okay, I'm originally from Sykeston. The diversion channel separates you and me. All right. The headwaters diversion channel is a canal built in between 1910 and 1916. The Little River Drainage District is a whole thing. Okay, there's some crazy history of this and how they drained the swamps of southeast Missouri and made it farmland. And they did it. This says the, the drainage ditch, ditch district was between 1914 and 1928. They moved more material than for the Panama Canal. Now, some of that's making levees. Some of that's draining ditches. All right. But all of southeast Missouri not being swamp is because of this. All right. I wanted to show this picture right here because originally the Castor River, this white, this part of the Whitewater River, they all flowed down in a little river here. All right. And then the St. Francis, and then they hit the Mississippi. To control flooding and drain some of this land so that these rivers are lower between here and here, the diversion channel goes right across here and cuts into the Mississippi here. So this much water in dark yellow goes across to the east and cuts over there. Um, the airport. You've seen the airport and then there's the field on the um, north of the airport. There's the field that's north of the, uh, the diversion channel that floods all the time. All right. Here is some of the Geological Survey, USGS. There's some markers they've got of the lo uh, locations along the channel. Um, here is where the diversion channel actually hits the Mississippi River. And earlier when I did this, it turned to satellite. So there's Nash Road, which is uh, also AB goes across Scott City. There we go. This is the Mississippi. There's a little, there's Marquette Island, which is, you know, island is sandbar. There's the diversion channel. There it goes under 55. There's the airport. This north side floods all the time. The south side does not. That is some ditch building. What I do know is right here along 55, this is the first you start getting into Cape. As you come up here, in the flood of 93, this little thing right here, we're going to zoom in here. I know this is not maybe not the best map, but we're going to zoom in right here. That is Interstate 55, southbound, northbound. Those are power lines. This is a big substation right here. During the flood of 93, there was not this levee around here. And the river and the diversion channel flooded. All of this was underwater. This was entirely underwater. This exit right up here, this is 74 South Sprague. This is heading out to, um, well, what used to be Dutchtown, right? Um, all of this, the water, was all the way up to here. If you tried to get off the interstate here, you would just drive down into the bottoms and be underwater. We can talk about the flood later um, and how 93 isn't the high water mark anymore. But streams, profiles, base levels, mouth of the stream, delta, all of it. Guys, have a great day.